Okay. Hello and welcome. My name is Katherine Hamilton and I'm CD Director here at Bouvet College of Health Sciences. And today I'd like to um, introduce, uh, we have a, a speech language pathology and audiology um, discussion and we wanted to make sure that you get all the information you need about the program. So we have our professor, uh, Sarah Young Hung, who's the clinical assistant the clinical professor in the speech language pathology and audiology program, and she's going to discuss the program. And then we have uh, three of our current students that will uh, share a little bit about their experience for you. And so, um, Professor Young Hung, I'll turn it to you. Great. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Professor Young Hong, um, and I'm a clinical faculty member in the department, the Communication Sciences and Disorders Department, which houses our speech language pathology and audiology program. Um, I've been at Northeastern for about 15 years now, and I'm currently the undergrad program director and also the clinic director for our on campus speech language and hearing center. So, welcome everyone. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our program, um, but then mostly turn it over for questions. We have students here and they can share best um, as to they live and breathe it. Um, but our program um, has um, all the excellence that comes with being a Bouvet student. Um, our curriculum encompasses courses across various arenas, including sciences, math, psychology, healthcare and research, and our curriculum meets all NU path and core requirements for the university. Students will experience life at a large university while engaging in, in interprofessional education within Bouvet College. Our class sizes are small and they allow for direct interactions with our faculty and a customizable learning experience. Students will sit alongside learners from physical therapy, health sciences, nursing, pharmacy, just to name a few. Bouvet's unique and expansive experiential network provides relevant opportunities for students to explore areas within the field of speech language pathology and audiology. And this usually helps students roll out or select areas of future study and allows them to immerse in related fields. So they emerge with well-rounded learning profiles. Uh, the CSD department, uh, we do have some groundbreaking research laboratories that are accessible to our undergraduate students. Uh, we have research uh, ongoing right now related to swallowing, speech and language and cognition and other communication disorders. We encourage undergraduate students to volunteer or to apply for uh, paid positions in research laboratories on campus. And we have over 200 plus medical and educational clinical placement sites available through our department's network. And this includes our on-campus speech language and hearing center. And our undergraduate students will obtain their first observation hours here on campus with us. And throughout their program, students will have opportunities for civic engagement, um, allowing them to contribute to the field beyond the classroom. So volunteer opportunities, um, educational opportunities within our student groups. Um, and while the master's degree is the terminal degree for speech language pathologists who are licensed and the doctorate of audiology is required for audiologists, um, there are direct career opportunities immediately upon graduation with a bachelor's of science in speech language pathology and audiology. Um, the department does offer um, an early intervention certificate program uh, which students can complete and fast track themselves into a position in the field of early intervention, which is that birth to three population. And we also offer a plus one program, uh, which is a direct entry. You go all the way through from your first year, you apply in your junior year, and then you complete your master's program in your senior year and one additional year and walk out with both your bachelor's and your master's in five years. So I'll stop there. Um, Catherine, turn it back over to you and maybe the students can introduce themselves as well. Sure, thank you. Um, so yes, let's get to, we have a, a couple of our undergrad students and one of our grad students. Um, Kate, uh, let's start with you. Hi, um, so I'm Kate. I'm a fourth year speech language pathology and audiology major. I have a minor in communication studies and I'm from Waterbury, Connecticut. Wonderful, cool. Lucia? 
Hi, I'm Lucia. I'm a third year SLPA major and a health psych minor. Um, I'm from Westchester, New York, and I'm actually a transfer student. So this is my second year at Northeastern. Great, representing the Northeast there. And Paige? Hello, my name is Paige Holtman. I'm a second year graduate student at Northeastern and I am from Boston, Massachusetts. Wonderful, so it's mostly New Englanders, cool. So um, I guess there's a couple of questions. Um, one of the ones we're seeing now, um, what do you think is unique? And I'll, I'll pose this to some of the undergrads. What do you think is unique about the program? Uh, I think we had in our title, a program like no other. So what do you think is unique about the program? Kate or Lucia, sure, you, I can either, go. either, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I mean, this is always the answer for Northeastern, but I think the co-op program really sets us apart for this because this really is a field where you kind of want to get to go into the field to see if you know it, you like it, because a lot of people won't have experience with speech language pathology unless they had, you know, that therapy themselves or audiology unless they have any hearing concerns themselves. So if you don't know anything about it, then you obviously want to get some work experience there. So it's really, really nice to be able to go into a clinic or a school and get to see real professionals at work and work alongside them. I would also say the program is relatively small, but we're still a pretty big school. So you get all the like access of a big school, but me as a transfer student, I was in last year, I was in all the first year um, like meetings with my advisor. So like, I know everyone in basically in the major. So it's really like nice to know everyone and get to know everyone over the years. Great. Paige, do you have some thoughts? Um, well, in terms of for graduate school, I didn't go here for undergrad, but um, for mm -hmm. grad school, I think it's really unique um, for the co-ops, definitely in our placements. We have access to so many different types of experiences, which is really important if you're interested in pursuing a career in speech pathology, because it's just such a diverse field where so we really have the opportunity to get exposure to different disorders and patient populations. And that was something that had attracted me and to the to Northeastern and continues to impress me while I'm here. So I'm thankful for that. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. So Sarah, can you talk a little bit about the combined major? I think you covered a little bit of it in your overview, but let's go a little deeper into that. What, what can you tell us about the combined major? Sure, so right now we have two combined majors. One is with communication studies and one is with uh, linguistics. Um, and we actually created these majors because we found that a lot of students who were entering our profession were coming with these backgrounds. And it was often difficult for them to choose, do I do a linguistics major or do I do a speech pathology major when they really had passion for both areas. So at present, um, both of those degrees can be completed simultaneously and students are still prepared for entry to a master's program um, when they uh, graduate with those combined degrees. Great. Um, and I think in our title, we said a program like no other. So in, from Sarah, from your perspective, um, what there's no other program like this in the Boston area, is that correct? That's correct. We are the only program with the plus one. So the entry from your undergrad to graduate in just five years. Um, so to speak to that, I usually talk about four different things that make that plus one unique. Um, the first is sort of what Lucia touched upon is, is this intimate education. I know every person on the screen. Um, I've talked to them all. We've been virtual for the last um, little bit, but um, we know all of our students and we help them to customize their experience at a large university, but still get that personalized feel. Um, it is a small teacher to student ratio in the classroom, which uh, really affords us a relationship where students feel very comfortable asking questions, approaching their professors and things like that. Um, the second thing I'll comment on is our um, state of the art on campus clinic, the speech language and hearing center. Um, and we have opportunities for students right here on campus to get observations, to come see what the field is about, to observe not only speech language pathology and action, but we also are a dual practice where we have audiology patients coming in as well. So there's a nice crossover between those two fields. 
And we have very skilled uh, supervisors and lots of opportunities for students throughout their program. The third thing I'll mention is the opportunities for conducting research. Um, we have very well-known, internationally known faculty in our department and to have the opportunities to work alongside of them. Students have presented at conferences, both nationally and internationally. They've been on publications. Um, so it's, it's, it's not just you walk in, you do a little research and you're done. It's a fully immersive experience where you can take it as far as you'd like to go with that. And then I, you know, I must touch on the financial benefits of graduating in five years. Um, if I had that opportunity, I know I would have taken it um, to get my bachelor's and master's in five years. There's obviously the financial benefit there as well. Great, great, thank you. Um, I think one of our undergrads might also have some experience in research. Kate, is that you, that you, you did some research already? Yes, um, so I have been a part of Dr. Kristen Allison's SMILE lab on campus. It's a speech motor and learning um, lab. So basically she does a lot with um, motor speech disorders, a lot of projects with young kids about preschool age. Um, I'm actually taking a bit of a break this semester just because of my workload is a little too much. Um, but yeah, it's been a weird past year and a half with doing research on campus. But overall, it's been really interesting that I got to, at the time when I started, I was only like 18, but I got to actually, you know, work with the young population, actually like do real like data analysis and like parse stuff on the computer and everything that I did not think I would be, you know, totally qualified for, but it's, it's not as hard as you think. <laughs> Great. See, it, it's just the learning how to get ready to do something. That's all it is. So Lucia, maybe I can ask you about our co-op. Have you, you've been on co-op, correct? You have? No, so I'm actually taking no. the, the co-op class right now. So we're starting okay. to just get our resumes ready and start to apply for um, the spring. But that's interesting to know as well, so that you work with an advisor in mm -hmm. the co-op and then they help Tell us a little bit more about that, if you would. Yeah, so you'll actually take a one credit intro to co-op class where you have your own advisor. So I think there's four of us in my class right now. So it's really intimate and like, she's really able to help us um, go over our resume and just like get ourselves ready. Um, the speech co-ops aren't out quite yet. So we haven't been able to apply like some other majors, but, um, I think in the next few weeks, we'll be able to do that. Great. And Kate, where you, did you raise your hand? You did a co-op already. Yeah, so this past spring, I was on co-op at Boston Children's Hospital. I was a clinical assistant in their audiology department. I actually still work there part-time. I'll be there tomorrow. Um, but yes, yeah, so that was really fun. So I want to do audiology and there aren't that many options. So I was really lucky to have found that. And so I just got to you know work alongside the audiologist, help the test, do some administrative stuff. So yeah, that was fun. But yeah, like Lucia just said, I applied in like October of last year, heard back within a few weeks, did like the interview process. It's pretty much just like applying to a job. Great, great. Sarah, did you want to add anything about their, the co-ops at all? Uh, no, I appreciate everyone talking about what it, you know, where you start and where you end up. Um, I, I would just highlight that, you know, some students will use a co-op to say, do I really want to do audiology? And they'll go do something in audiology and go, wow, I really love that. That was great, right? And some students will say, mm, not sure, and they'll dabble in it and they'll go, no, audiology isn't for me. I'm definitely going to go speech pathology. Um, so it really helps them to figure out because our program prepares for both fields and what comes next with those in terms of education. Um, it helps students to figure out where they might want to be with that. Um, and sometimes the co-ops are really interprofessional. Um, for example, we've had a student um, in, in the past year or so that had a co-op um, with a physical therapist. And people were like, well, why would you do that? But it gave her this really different perspective. She was working in a rehab clinic with all three disciplines, OT, PT, speech. And um, it gave her the opportunity to see the field that she was going to be in from the other side of the table. And it gave her this really unique um, and productive perspective in how she then will approach her patients moving forward. So um, co-op can be in the field or in a related field um, and all around, it gives you this great experience. 
That's great. That's great. That really is exciting to hear. Well, let me ask the students. Um, can any either or any of you um, speak about a unique experience that you've had at Northeastern at classroom organizations, um, co-op, anything at all? Kate, yeah, I'm gonna look at um, you. Oh, good. Oh, good. Kate, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Sure. I think that this is also, um, after I had said my piece earlier, I, this is something big um, that I think makes Northeastern unique as well. Um, I participate in the, we all participate our first year in graduate um, school. We participate in language literacy program where we do um, language literacy assessments with preschool students, as well as run literacy groups with those students. And I did it my first semester with Professor Fine and we did, um, I decided I was interested in it. I reached out to her. I told her I was really interested in literacy. We had to do it over telepractice. So we were able to kind of, um, I guess, pioneer a little research project. And we worked on it together. And um, we actually were able to apply to ASHA and um, present our findings. So we're going to do that. And I think that um, it was just really cool because I was able to work with a professor. I reached out, I was kind of something that was a little bit, it wasn't a set of research project. It was something that we kind of worked on together and collaborated with together. But because I expressed my interest in this, she was able to work with me and help me kind of create something that was my own. So I feel like all the professors are really good at that. If you are interested in something, you can always reach out to them and they'll do their best to meet your needs and try and find ways for you to just explore as much as you can while you're here. Thank you, Paige. That's great. I, and that leads me to my next question really about, I, I think Sarah mentioned it. Um, what has been, uh, Lucia or Kate, um, your experience with uh, faculty, just like the relationship that you've been able to develop with faculty thus far? I can speak to that. Um, I think when uh, what actually I was thinking of for a unique thing about our experience was that I think it's really cool that a lot of the professors are working professionals in either speech language pathology or audiology. I think that's a really special thing. I haven't really seen that in other departments. Obviously, I haven't attended other undergraduate programs, but um, I think that's really cool. And I think that does really inform your relationship with them because if they are working in the field that you know you want to be in, that's such a great resource to ask questions or just listen to their stories, even if you don't like feel comfortable reaching out and just be like, hey, I don't know if I'd love that. Or like, actually, I would really enjoy being in that situation. So I think that's really cool. Um, and again, as everyone said, it's a small program. It's a pretty tight group. You get to know everyone very well. So I think that also helps. Thank you. Lucia, anything you think can think of too? Yeah, I mean, I would just kind of add to that. I was actually just last night, I had um, my anatomy and physiology of the speech and hearing mechanism. And I got there a little bit early and I was um, talking to my professor and she actually went to Northeastern undergraduate, went to Northeastern grad school and now is working here. Um, and she works at a um, at an elementary school in Billerica. So I was just kind of talking to her last night about what it's like to work in, in an elementary school because she also worked in a clinic before. So just kind of getting her um, take on the two different um, the two different placements and how the populations are different and how they're the same. So I think that's really special, just getting to talk to your professors who like do that every day. It's not just that they're teaching it, but they actually do it. Yes, that's important. That's totally important. It's it's obviously, and Sarah, you you know, you can speak to this too. It, it's bringing the real world experience of what happens every day from the clinics or what you encounter into the classroom. So it makes it real for the student to understand what they're getting into and how they can help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole idea, bridging that gap between the, the classroom and with the clinical. Um, and that's, you know, the area of focus for many of our researchers as well. Um, so they're they're working on that with recognizing that, okay, the, you know, we just don't operate in this vacuum over here. There has to be this connection to what our students are doing and what we're training our, our future SLPs and audiologists to do as well. Great. Um... One of maybe it's, uh, students can take uh, talk a little bit about um, 
or maybe Sarah, I, let me let me go to you. Um, usually students ask about healthcare and how um, to explore different aspects of healthcare. But this is a very unique uh, program, even though it's a, a smaller program. Can you tell us what an, a student can do with this degree? I think that's usually what the kind of questions they'll say, okay, so I wanna learn about this, but then what can I do when I get out as an undergrad? Sure. Um... So as, as most will learn, the master's degree or the AUD or the terminal degrees to be a practicing clinician. Um, but with a bachelor's degree, um, some students will um, take a break and uh, kind of work for a little bit and dabble a little bit in, in different areas to further explore interests. Um, one of those areas is early intervention. So uh, students can work as an early in, in early intervention as a developmental specialist with a bachelor's degree in speech language pathology. Um, as I mentioned before, we do have the early, early intervention certificate program. So um, students who have that certificate um, also have a leg up once they enter that field as well in terms of their progression. Um, Students can work as a speech language pathology assistant. Um, that's a position that's recognized by ASHA. There are certification requirements for that. Um, and those individuals are providing the intervention and the services under the supervision of a licensed speech language pathologist. Um, and, you know, it, it really depends on what students are interested in. Um, some students have delved in linguistics and phonetic roles, um, you know, tapping into that area of their background. Um, others have worked in healthcare in different um, arenas, either as assistants or um, support staff. So there are opportunities in the field and having this background kind of gives you a leg up in terms of, oh, I know a little bit about that already. I can kind of, um, kind of easily meld into that. Um, I'd pose the same question to the students. Um, in terms of, you know, have you thought about other careers um, if you weren't pursuing a terminal degree or have you heard of other um, students who have done other things once they've graduated? I personally also know audiology assistants. That's also a cool career. Um, just working at a clinic, working under audiologists to assist a lot with pediatric clients. Um, I don't know anyone who did it, but I feel like it would be good for like teaching, especially younger grades, that would help. Um, I've also thought about like public health after. Um, don't have any clear plans on that now, but obviously like any, you know, master's in public health, master's in like health administration, I feel like that would be well prepared for, stuff like that. Great. Yeah. Uh, Paige, from your perspective as a grad student, um, uh, what, what it, what's your feel so far as far about the field and, and really about, you know, how you decided this program? And, I, and then I'm going to ask the same question of the undergrads. How did you, I guess the main question is, how did you decide this program? Sure. Um, I didn't come from a traditional CSD background, although I wish I had, it would have made things a lot easier. So this five-year program would have just been like the program of my dreams. I had I got my undergrad in um, special education. So it was kind of similar, but definitely there's a lot of different, um, a lot more that I'm learning now that I'm in speech. But um, so I did my prerequisites and as I was looking for programs, I knew I wanted to be in the Boston area. I knew that um, I, I wanted to be in like in the city and just have a lot of access to different types of placements and work um, closely with my professors. So I was kind of, I was really attracted to the small classroom size that North, Northeastern has. And again, all of their clinical opportunities. But what really sold it for me was we had an interview day. This was right before COVID. So we all came in for our interviews and we got tours and we met the faculty. And I just really enjoyed that whole experience. Um, and so it made me decide like Northeastern was where I wanted to go. And um, again, I really feel like they've stood true to those expectations that I had from the beginning till now. I've had those experiences that, that I've wanted. I've gotten close with my professors. I've lived in the city. It's, of course, it has been different with COVID, but um, I'm still living in the city. I don't feel like I'm, you know, I'm close with my cohort. So I really feel like everything that I was hoping for, I did get out of the, out of the program. Yay. 
we did it. Good. <laughs> now we just get you to graduation. Cool. And so uh, my undergrads, Kate and Lucia, tell us a little bit about how you decided this uh, was the right program for you. Um, so I'm actually, like I said before, I'm a transfer. So um, mm -hmm. I went into my first year of college as actually a biomedical engineering student. And I quickly realized that that was way too much math and engineering and not enough science for me. Um, and I've always had kind of a, um, a passion for languages. I speak German and Swiss German. Um, so it's always been in me just since growing up. So I kind of, um, when I was looking into transferring and different um, programs, I kind of just stumbled upon SLP and I just started reading about it. And it just seemed to be this perfect mix of the science and the language um, that I always loved and wanted. Um, and I also have always been kind of involved with um, like the disabled population. I um, uh, in high school, I worked at this camp for um, kids from 6 to 21 um, with di different dis disabilities. So it's always kind of just been something that I'm passionate about. So when I started learning um, about the program at Northeastern and just the co-ops and everything that everything that Northeastern has to offer, it just made sense for me. Great. Yeah, I would say I also had a bit of an orthodox path. Um, so the major was not open here when I started my freshman year. So I actually came in as a health science major. And then I also quickly learned that um, that was very pre-med and that was not what I wanted to do. So I, I had a minor at the time in the communication science and disorders. Um, Cause I also, I've always been very interested in language. I think it's cool and I want to be in healthcare, but not pre-med, um, too much calculus. Um, but yeah, so I had that. And then um, a year and a half later when the opportunity came to switch majors, I did kind of hesitate because I'm like, is it too late? Is it worth it? But in the end, I did end up doing all my pre -wax and I switched and glad to be here. <laughs> great, that's great. So as we, um, we're about to close, I think we've kind of covered a lot of the questions that we are here uh, seeing, but um, let me ask all of the students, why should other students consider this program? I think you've made it very clear on why you chose, but why should students pick um, this program? I can talk to that. Um, I okay. think if um, the students know they want to go into healthcare, I think Boston is a really fantastic city to be in. Um, obviously, we're surrounded by some of the greatest hospitals in the world, but also there are just so many other healthcare students here that it really feels like you're part of like a larger community of kids who are all pretty focused on what you want to do, like not even just Bouvet, but you know, there's NCPHS and all the other schools around here that are pretty healthcare focused. So I think this is a really great opportunity if you know that this is the kind of world you want to be in, you're going to have some really, really great influences. And I would also just say, like, co-op. I think co-op is, this is so amazing. I haven't even gone on co-op, but I'm so excited. Um, and even, like, I think I want to work in a school, but I think I want to do my co-op in more of, like, a clinical setting. So, like, Professor Young Hung said before, like, you can kind of see what you don't want to do if you want to go that route. Or maybe I'm really going to like the clinical setting and end up wanting to do that. So I think just having the program um, and getting your foot in the door before you even graduate is just amazing. Great. So as we um, just approach the four o'clock uh, time, I think uh, we will close for today. I wanna thank all of the students um, and Professor Young Hung um, for her time today. Um, our enrollment management team, Kelly and um, Melissa have put in the chat um, the curriculum. And then if you have any questions, you can uh, get in touch with the enrollment team to ask any questions you have about the program. And we all thank you so much for your time today, your attention. And we look forward to you joining us on other uh, program highlights. Thank you.